present when I was in When I was in high school, I had lots of a lot of friends. We hung out at friends' houses, hung out at my house. When I came back from college, I got a job working at Willis. I Baby sat my niece and two nephews. I was going to Wharton Community College. I was working and saving money so I could move into my own apartment. With friends, I was paying my own bills. I was happy but also sad because me and my girlfriend were having a lot of problems. That may be part of the reason. I was drinking that night, I really don't remember. After my accident, I don't remember much. I don't remember my accident. I don't remember having brain surgery. I do remember going to a place to live for four months, and that is because it made a very bad impression on me. My life now is very different. I feel like I'm missing out on life. My life has changed physically, emotionally, and socially. I used to run all the time. Now I can't run. I'm frustrated a lot because I can remember how I was. I don't talk to anyone anymore. My best friend kind of left me. I lost freedom to do what I want when I want. I have to ask my mom to take me wherever. I want to go. My day involves getting up, having my mom help me shower, help me get rest, do my dredges. I have to at least three times a week go to Houston, Houston to have therapy. Sometimes we are there all day. I have to wear a brightness on my arm that sends electrical impulses to tell my brain to open and close my hands. I can use my left to eat alone. But when I try to eat with my right, I need to help someone to help me. When I go to bed, I have to put a brace on my leg that stretches my tendon in my uh, Never mind.
<laughs> when I go to bed, I have to put on the night brush on my leg and on my head. I have to wear a big focus blend. At least that stretches that my tendons in my wrist. When I wake up the next morning, it's the same thing every day, over and over again. This could have been avoided if I had made sure that I did not have access to my case. I would not be talking to you now. This is a this is a sad fact of life. My accident made my mom's life revolve around mine. It has made my niece and nephews very sad and miss the old Jamie. Even though you are too young to drink. I can't stop you. But I want you to remember James Michael Chapman and what it's like was and is like now. And to be smart and never get into a car with someone who has been drinking. So those are James' words. That's his perception of what his life is like now, and it's a pretty accurate perception. Um, and like he said, he was too young to drink when his accident happened, but he drank. So I missed my 21st birthday. He did. He missed his 21st birthday. He was in a coma, which is like the biggest birthday that you're going to have other than when you turn 25. <laughs> Thanks. Happy, birthday, Happy today. birthday. It's today. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but all we ask is you're going to drink. You're, you're juniors in high school, going to be seniors, going away to college, parties, summer's coming. It's going to happen. You're going to go to a friend's house, and mom, mom and dad are going to be out. The beer's going to come out, the wine's going to come out. Heavier stuff is probably going to come out, and you have to make a decision. And if you make the adult decision to drink, then you need to make the adult decision to say, how am I going to get home before I start drinking? And that's all we're asking. Put away the keys. Don't have access to your car. Call your parents. Call a friend and say, come get me. Because I don't want to have this kind of life. It's not worth it. That one night for him is not worth it what he goes through now. And one of the other things that he goes through, and I forgot to mention, but it's in my little note there. Um, do you guys know what Botox is? Yes. Okay. The kind you know is the kind that takes away all the bags and the wrinkles and everything. There's also something called medicinal Botox. And medicinal Botox, it does the opposite of what the, the other Botox does. Is it, it releases the tendons. It makes them so that he can move things. Um, he has to have Botox every three months. He has about 75 injections every three months. The needle's about that long. And they start at his neck. They go down the shoulder. They go down into the shoulder blade. They go down his arm. They do all the digits, all the necklace, because his, otherwise his fingers would just seize up. They then go down, and they start here. And they go down. They do the hip. They do the leg. They do back here in the calf. They do back here, and they do his toes. And he has it done every three months. And it's all because of the traumatic brain injury that he suffered that night. And it's all because he left his keys on the counter. And that's what Jamie and I are about now. My so. keys were probably in my pocket. Or in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other thing that happens, too, is your short-term memory um, it's gone. Your short-term memory goes. You you ask every single day 
20, 30 times a day to change that question. He has no memory of living on his own. He knows he lived on his own, but he doesn't have the memory of living there. He doesn't have the memory of, he knows who he lived with, but he doesn't know what he did. Like, you know, just day-to-day -day life. He knows because we told him. But he doesn't have that actual memory of like, oh, wow, you know, last week we, you know, went and saw some friends. He doesn't have that memory anymore. It's wiped clean. And they said the reason for that is because your brain is so traumatized that your brain says you don't need that memory from a year before your accident. Because my, your brain is working so overtime to make you healthy again. And we have no idea how far Jamie will go. Of course, we pray that he will become just a normal person again, but our lives will never be the same. None of us. So that's what we asked for. And he has some pictures if you want to describe them. This is a middle school days. You